10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 75. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 75 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. Let's jump right into it today. We got a ton of stuff to cover and we got some big changes coming to the podcast that I wanted to talk to you about. The very first thing that I wanted to do is give a huge shout out to some of the people that have left reviews this week. So the first shout out goes out to Field Runner Fan. They say, in the busy day-to-day grind, I find this podcast motivating and easy to follow. Great job. Well, thank you so much, Field Runner fan. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Give you a short dose of jazz for your week so that you have something to work on. Um, And thank you so much for that review. We really, really appreciate it. Um, If you guys have two seconds, please go on to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating and review. It really helps us to get the podcast out to more people and brings us up in the rankings so that more people like you can find the podcast and get our jazz lessons every single week. So the second thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, which is a huge change for the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson podcast, is that we're moving all of our PDFs over to our Patreon website. Now, if you've never uh, dealt with Patreon before, it is a really, really cool website where you can support the creators that really matter to you. And we hope here at the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast that we are worthy of your support every month. And we kind of had to figure out a way to make the podcast economically viable. We have a lot of expenses, including website maintenance, hosting fees, um, everything that goes into getting the podcast out to you every single week. So we decided that we had to move our PDFs over to this Patreon site, where if you donate $3 or more a month you can get access to those PDFs. Now, it's not something that we wanted to do. It's just kind of something that we had to do. Um, I wish that we could keep giving the PDFs away for free, but we do need to start seeing a few dollars coming in through the door every single month in order to keep the podcast going and coming to you and high quality. Um, so if, if we do matter to you, if you get something out of this podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash 10 minute jazz lesson. And you'll also be able to find the link to the Patreon site all over our website. So if you can't find it, just go to the website and you'll be able to find the link. And if you can find it in your heart to donate $3 or more a month to us, that would be awesome. It will keep the podcast in business and coming to you every single week with a couple episodes. Planning on doing a lot more once we get to certain levels of support. We want to get some world famous jazz musicians in to do lessons for you. And as a free gift for you becoming a Patreon member, we're going to give you our latest ebook, Diatonic Workout, which is about nine pages of diatonic exercises to get you moving around your instrument and get the sounds of uh, diatonic workouts in your ears like you've never had before. So please uh, go over to our Patreon website and sign up to become a patron of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson. It only costs you three bucks a month and you'll keep getting all the fantastic PDFs and a bunch of extras on top of that. And we thank you so much for that. We appreciate every single one of our audience members here at the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson. And I really hope you guys understand that we just kind of had to do this to keep the podcast in business. So hopefully we'll see you over at the Patreon website. Let's jump into today's episode. So today we're going to be taking a look at a lick from one of my favorite guitar players on the planet, Pat Martino. And this is going to be over the tune Blue Bossa, which is a really, really common tune in the jazz canon that you'll hear played all the time. And I'd actually be surprised if a lot of you haven't studied this tune yet, but this is a great example on how to play over this. So the lick that we're going to be looking at today actually takes place over the 251 to C minor. Um, this is a really, really important part of this tune. And Pat Martino just really displays his mastery as he plays over this. And this one's really going to be all about the choices he makes harmonically over this 251. Rhythmically, it's pretty simple. It's all eighth notes. 
Um, so we're really going to be talking about note choice here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the line for you first, and then we're going to dissect it a little bit and talk about exactly what's going on in it. So hopefully you can already hear how interesting that line is. And let's rip it apart a little bit to find out exactly what Pat Martino is doing that makes it such a slick and cool line. So let's start by taking a look at the minor 7 flat 5 chord. So it's a concert D minor 7 flat 5 chord. And basically what he's doing is he's using the Locrian mode of the E flat major scale which is the mode that goes along with minor 7 flat 5. And I think I'm going to do a whole episode on that. But just for now, know that the correct scale that goes along with a D minor 7 flat 5 is an E flat major scale starting on D. So we see he starts on a B flat, and the only non-harmonic tone that he uses in this entire measure is that B natural. Technically, that's not really supposed to fit in there, but he's using it for effect and he's using it to get a little bit of chromaticism in the line. Then what he does is he jumps up the arpeggio D to F to A flat. So that's right up the D diminished triad. And then he goes to a B flat, which is the flat six in the key of D minor seven. And then right back down to the four and the three. So it's actually a pretty straightforward line, but if you look at the way he combines stepwise motion and the way that he uses arpeggiated motion, it's really genius. And that's something that you should be thinking about. You should always be thinking about combining your arpeggios and your scales to make something more interesting. You don't want to be somebody who's just playing scales all the time or just playing arpeggios all the time. You want to come up with some ways to combine the two. All right, now let's go to the five chord, which is the really interesting part. So this is just a plain old G7, and it's not very typical that we see just a plain old G7 after a D minor seven flat five, but most of the people that I know that play this tune use just that regular pure G mixolydian sound over that G7. But I think that the really important thing here is that Pat Martino teaches us that even though it's just a regular G7 with no alterations, we can use as many alterations as we want to. And he does that here. So let's look at the first half of the measure. He starts by using the flat six or the flat 13, which is, you know, a little bit more out, especially when it comes to playing over a pure mixolydian chord. But really what he's doing is he's shooting for the D on beat two. And what he's doing is he's surrounding it. So he's playing an E flat, and then he's jumping down to a C, and then he's sort of resolving it on a D. So it's what we call an enclosure. He's going a half step above, a whole step below, and then playing the target note, which is the D. But that E flat gives it a really, really cool sound because it's also a little bit of a color tone over that G7. So he continues by heading down the scale after the D, he plays a C. Then on beat three, he's playing the third. And then on the end of three, he's playing the flat nine. So this is kind of proof that even though we're using this regular G7 chord, the flat nine is still 100% available to us. And we should be thinking about using notes like that if we want to get a more interesting line out of what we're doing. So he has the third followed by the flat nine. Then he lands on the root on beat four. And then again, he jumps down to that flat 13. So he jumps down to that E flat. So it's a really, really cool five chord measure. Um, and one that you should study really, really closely to kind of see how it ticks. And then of course, like we always say here, steal it and start using it in your own playing. But there's a lot of stuff to unpack over that five chord. So, you know, take your time on that. Really try to hear everything that Pat Martino is doing. Um, and then apply it to your own playing for maximum results. Okay, now we get to the one chord, the minor chord. Now he does something really interesting. He starts that measure on the sharp four or the flat five, whatever you want to call it. So normally we're taught that we must resolve on the one chord on the downbeat. So that typically means playing a chord tone 
directly on the downbeat to give that ear the release that it wants. But Pat Martino is kind of uh, doing something a little bit different here, and he's doing what's called the delayed resolution. We might do an entire episode on that as well, but just for now, let's, let's discuss it really quickly. So he lands on that sharp four, but then immediately resolves it to five. So your ear is thinking, okay, he's going to play a chord tone on beat one, and then he doesn't, which further delays that resolution and gives you a little bit more tension before that release, okay? So sharp four to five, and then what he does is he continues going up the C minor seven scale to the six, which is A. Then he does something interesting here too, which is he uses the major seven. So he uses B natural instead of B flat. And the whole reason that this kind of works is if you look at the and of three, I'm sorry, the and of two, beat three, and the and of three, it's all leading towards the root of the C minor chord. So he plays B natural, D, B natural, C. So the reason why that B natural works is because ultimately he's going to be resolving it to the C, which will ultimately bring the ear at rest on the C. Okay, and then he does a pretty basic thing after he plays the C. He just goes right up the scale to D, then to E flat, and then he jumps up to the five, which is C. So all in all, a very, very interesting line. I think you can get something from every single measure of this two, five, one lick. Um, the material over the minor seven flat five chord is really great in terms of structuring a line between, you know, scale and arpeggio. Measure two is really, really good because we get these enclosures, and we also see how he's using the flat nine, which is something that we always want to be able to do in a better way and come up with as many different ways of using that flat nine as possible. And then the minor chord, the one chord, is really great because he teaches us how to use that leading tone, which is the major seven, in a way that's very, very effective. Okay, so email me if you have any questions. This would be a great lick to work on this week, and you're playing maybe. Maybe work on a little blue bossa this week and get this material going. Um, again, uh, the PDFs can be found at our Patreon website. It's patreon.com slash 10 minute jazz lesson. If you can't find it that way, then please just head over to our website, 10 minute jazz lesson.com and follow the links to our Patreon page. We appreciate you guys so much. Hope you get something out of this. Send me any questions you might have. 10 minute jazz lesson at gmail.com and keep those iTunes reviews coming. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you on Monday for a little bit of motivation. Mm -hmm.